welcome to Behind the Music edition of Daily Hope. I'm Kristen Holton Crowdy, and it's just always fun to come back and talk with you about some things that I've been thinking about this week as I prepare for worship. This week is an especially exciting weekend because we're going to be commissioning our new chaplain, Susan Westland. And so as we welcome her in here, we've decided to celebrate communion at all services. She'll be officiating at that. And it's just going to be a wonderful time for us to embrace her as one of the leaders of our community. So I hope that you can come. If you're not physically here in Arizona, please join us online because it's just going to be a really joyful, really joyful weekend. Now, when we come to worship, there are always certain things that you can expect. If you were to list off what you might plan when you come to church, you're probably going to hear a sermon. <laughs> I don't think there's any pastor who says, oh, we don't need the sermon this week. So there's always going to be a sermon. There's always going to be prayers of some sort. Sometimes they're bidding prayers where we respond to something the pastor said. Sometimes they just pray. Sometimes they're written out in advance. Sometimes they're more extemporaneous. But there's always going to be prayer when we come to worship together. There are also things like creeds. And we usually, I would say, almost always have a creed here. Sometimes it's tied in with new members or baptisms or things, but we always try and express what it is that we believe. And so often it's the Apostles' Creed, but there are other ones that are longer, like the Nicene Creed. And so a creed, sharing what we believe is important. And confession, we always confess at the beginning of worship. And in part of that, we have what's called the Kyrie in the Hymn of Praise. Now, over time, music changes and evolves. And for a long time here at Victory, we have been using things from the Green Hymnal. You recognize it. This is our Lutheran book of worship that we use. And in there, there's a Kyrie, which is just another word for prayer, where the pastor sings a phrase and we respond, Lord, have mercy. This is Kyrie is a word from Greek for the word of Lord. And so we're responding, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Kind of just adding our own sort of petition onto whatever the pastor has just sung. If you go back even farther than that, some of you might remember the red hymnal, there's a different way to do the Kyrie. It's a little more chant-based than what we have in LBW, but just one of those things, as music changes, as people change, as we explore new ways to worship, we're still taking these same elements, we still wanna pray, we still wanna sing, and how can we make that a little bit more relevant? Now, Pacific Lutheran University commissioned a work by Marty Hogg, and they said, we have all these beautiful ideas about worship, things that we want to do. We want to pray, we want to praise, we want to implore, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. And we have other words that we use too, but maybe could there be a way that we could update some of them, set it to some new music, and try and make it even more current. It doesn't mean that what's come before is wrong, it just means we want to build on the foundation that we have. And so they commissioned Marty Hawkins, and he wrote what's called Now the Feast and Celebration. Now, it's very long if we were to use all of it. Um, service would be much longer than it is because there's things for before and after the gospel. There's extra things to be sung during communion and so on. And it's beautiful when we have the time to do a full liturgy. But every now and then, it's nice to take pieces of it that we do regularly. And so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be using the Marty Hogg and Kyrie and now the Feast and Celebration. So it's the same idea with the words, but they've updated the text. If you remember when we sing here out of LBW, we see this is the feast of victory for our God. And then when we look at the Marty Hagen version, he's taking that same idea and he says, now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. So this weekend as we're celebrating communion, we're celebrating Susan being here with us. And of course we're coming together to celebrate what a great God that we have to worship. I hope that you'll be excited to learn some new music and sometimes having the words written in a little different way makes us think about it. And so I just hope it's a really wonderful and meaningful worship experience for you. I'll be back with you again next week. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.